Joshua got in trouble with Almighty God all because of what one man did and God took out his wrath upon the whole nation of Israel. That's right. Now this is the truth about the prophet Esau. The prophet Esau was questioned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because of the people claiming him to be God along with his mother. Now the prophet Esau was in trouble. Oh, he was in trouble. All because of what the people have done in making an idol out of him. And that is the truth right here in the house of David. That's right. And let's start with Joshua 17. Because the Christians are real quiet right now. <laughs> because they skip past Joshua and they run to John. They don't want to have anything to do with Joshua. This is the name of Jesus. They ignore the gospel of Joshua. Because you know what? The gospel of Joshua has the truth. Now, verse 10, and the Lord said unto Joshua, get thee up, wherefore liest thou thus upon thy face? Israel hath sinned, and they have also transgressed my covenant, which I commanded them, for they have even taken of the accursed thing, and have also stolen, and dissembled also, and they have put it even among their own stuff. Therefore, the children of Israel could not stand before their enemies, but turned their backs before their enemies because they were a curse. Neither will I be with you anymore except you destroy the accursed from among you. This is the Hebrew scriptures. Now, let's see if this matches with the Quran and the Hadiths. Book number 46, Hadith 37, Al Bukhari 2476, narrated by Ambu Herrera. May Allah be pleased with them. Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, said, The hour will not be established until the Son of Mary, i.e., Jesus, descends amongst you as a just ruler. He will break the cross, kill the pigs, and abolish the jizya tax. Why is he going to destroy the cross? Because the cross is Paul's church. Paul is the inventor of the religion we call Christianity. So we see, according to this Hadith, the first thing that Jesus will destroy is the cross. Now when we go back to Joshua, we see that Joshua was told to destroy the accursed from among him. And according to the Hadith, the prophet Isa will destroy the cross. Now, the same word is being used, destroy. Now, let's keep going. Let's go to al Maida 5, 116 through 118. And on judgment day, Allah will say, O oh Jesus, son of Mary, did you ever ask the people to worship you and your mother as God's? Besides Allah, he will answer, glory be to you. How could I ever say what I had no right to say? If I had said such a thing, you would have certainly known it. You know what is hidden within me, but I do not know what is within you. Indeed, you alone are the knower of all unseen. I never told them anything except what you ordered me to say. Worship Allah, my Lord, and your Lord. And I was witness over them as long as I remained among them. But when you took me, you were the witnesses over them. And you are a witness over all things. If you punish them, they belong to you after all. But if you forgive them, you are surely the Almighty all why so right here when we put all this together we see that the prophet Esau was in trouble 
He was being questioned. His life was on the line right there. We see that he saved himself, okay? Now, the prophets of the Hebrew scriptures, they could only save themselves. If they don't warn the people, God was going to judge them. But if they warn the people, they only save themselves. And according to what we just read in the Quran, Jesus only delivered himself. Now, let's get to the last day plague. Now, according to the Bible, the Bible says that the killing of the firstborn will be the last plague. Now, let's get this. This is going to be Exodus 11 and 1. And the Lord said unto Moses, Yet will I bring one plague more upon Pharaoh and upon Egypt. Afterwards, he will let you go hence. When he shall let you go, he shall surely thrust you out hence altogether. Verse 4. And Moses said, Thus saith the Lord, About midnight will I go out into the midst of Egypt, and all the firstborn in the land of Egypt shall die. From the firstborn of Pharaoh that sitteth upon his throne, even unto the firstborn of the maidservant that is behind the meal, and all the firstborn of beasts. And there shall be a great cry throughout all the land of Egypt, such as there was none like it, nor shall be like it any more. So right here, the last plague is the killing of the firstborn. Now let's match that with the Quran. This is going to be Al Imran 355. And when Allah said, Oh Jesus, I will cause thee to die a natural death and will exalt thee to myself and will clear from thee charges of those who disbelieve and will place those who follow you above those who disbelieve until the day of resurrection. Then to me shall be your return. And I will judge between you concerning that wherein you differ. So we see right here at the last day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will cause Jesus to die at the end. And according to the Bible, we see that the killing of the firstborn is not something that immediately happened. It was the last plague God did to destroy Pharaoh's dynasty. And that's exactly what's going on in the Quran, we see that the killing of the firstborn, which is a picture of Christ, is going to be something God will do at the end to get all of the glory back that you put upon the prophet Isa, that you put upon his mother. All that glory is going to go back to God. Remember, God was most famous for the killing of the firstborn. And it's the same thing at the end. He will be the most famous when he causes the prophet Esau, peace be upon him, to die. Now, let's get some more confirmation on this last day plague. I'm going to show you through the methods of the type and shadows that Jesus Christ will die at the end. Now, let's go to 2 Samuel 12 and 15. And Nathan departed unto his house, and the Lord struck the child that Uriah's wife bear unto David and it was very sick now this baby was created by David through his adultery with Bathsheba and this baby had to die this baby is a picture of Christ because Paul was the man who stole another man's wife and made a baby by her he made a God out of this baby and this baby is a picture of Christ who has to die now let's go to verse 16 David therefore besought God for the child, and David fasted, and went in, and lay all night upon the earth. And all the elders of his house arose, and went to him, to raise him up from the earth. But he would not, neither did he eat bread with him. And it came to pass on the seventh day. See, that's the number of completion. This is going into the last plague. This is something. That will happen at the end, Christian. Jesus didn't die yet. Y'all believe in Jesus prematurely. Before he even died, y'all believe he was crucified. 
Now let's keep going. And it came to pass on the seventh day that the child died. And the servants of David feared to tell him that the child was dead. For they said, Behold, while the child was yet alive, we spake unto him, and he would not hearken unto our voice. How will he then vex himself if we tell him that the child is dead? So this is going into David weeping and mourning and praying for this thing not to happen. But it eventually happened. Okay. And after the baby died, David started eating. He confused his servants because this is going into a sweet death. The prophet Isa's death is going to be the victory for Islam, because right now the Christians all around the world are teaching that Jesus Christ was crucified. But when the prophet Isa actually dies, what's going to happen? The Christian church is going to be destroyed. OK, they ain't going to have nothing to stand on at all. OK, this is going to completely shut their mouths and they're going to be forced to join Islam because Islam has the truth. Now let's get some more references on this final play. This is going to be in the book of Samuel again. Let's go to 2 Samuel 21 and 1. Then there was a famine in the days of David, three years, year after year. And David inquired of the Lord. And the Lord answered, It is for Saul and for his bloody house because he slew the Gibeonites. Now, the Gibeonites were the Amorites. But Gibeon is right now present-day Palestine. This is a metaphor. Let seven men of his sons be delivered unto us, and we will hang them up unto the Lord in Gibeah of Saul, whom the Lord did choose. And the king said, I will give them. So the agreement was to hang Seven of Saul's sons, not David's sons, okay? Not the son of David, not the prophet Esau, and why seven? We have to go back to the seven days with David's son. This is going into a number of completion. David was a son of Saul, and the prophet Esau is the son of David, and he is a son of Saul. He is the son of Paul. Open up your eyes. And the seven sons of Saul is a picture of Christ dying at the last day. I told you I was going to give you another reference. Now let's keep going. But the king spared Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, because the Lord's oath that was between them, between David and Jonathan, the son of Saul. Now this is going into the prophet Esau. He is the Mephibosheth that was spared. This man was spared. He was a son of Saul, just like Jesus was a son of Saul. But he was spared because of the oath in between David and Jonathan. Now let's keep going. But the king spared Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, because of the Lord's oath that was between them, between David and Jonathan, the son of Saul. And he delivered them into the hands of the Gibeonites. And they hanged them in the hill before the Lord. And they fell all seven together. And were put to death in the days of harvest. In the first days. In the beginning of barley harvest. So here's another reference. Showing you that the Christians and the so-called Jews will be a ransom. For the Muslims, God's going to give every Muslim a Jew and a Christian, and he's going to say, this is your ransom from the fire. The Christians, Paul, all of the house of Saul, Christians, Christianity all together will go into the fire. That's their fate. That's where they're going. They will be a ransom for the Muslims. And we are putting this all together. We see that the seven sons was not coming from David. These seven sons was coming from Saul. And this is going into how the prophet Esau will die at the last day, at the number of completion, the final day. Only Allah knows, subhanahu wa ta'ala. He knows and we don't. Even the prophet Esau doesn't know. You know why? Because he's not the all-knowing. He's not the knower of all unseen. 
He's not God Almighty, so he doesn't know. Only Allah knows the time, the day, and the hour. And we see that the prophet Isa will die at the end, Christian. He hasn't died yet. Duh. 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 So let's kill this with one more reference. I read this reference earlier, but it just went over your head. This is going to be Exodus 11 and 1. And the Lord said unto Moses, yet will I bring one plague more upon Pharaoh and upon Egypt. That's the Christians upon Paul's house. Saul's house is Christianity. The house of David is Islam and Christianity is the house of Saul. Afterwards, he will let you go. He shall surely thrust you out all together. Newsflash, the final plague was the killing of the firstborn. Now, these are some things you have to meditate upon. David was a son of Saul. The son of David, the prophet Esau, was a son of Saul. Now, that was the mystery. That was the secret that was hidden from the foundations of the world. You have to meditate on that. Why would God allow King Saul to try to kill David 26 times and he was unsuccessful? It was because it was a picture of Paul who tried his best to kill the prophet Esau on biblical record and he was unsuccessful. The truth that you got to come to grips with is that David and Saul was a picture of Jesus and Paul. And Paul. Paul was the father. Jesus was the son. That's why Jesus said, I am my father is one. He was saying, me and Paul is both equal. When Jesus said, he that have seen me have seen the father. In other words, he was trying to tell you. Paul is the false Jesus. He want to be me. If you see me, you see Paul. Because Paul was Jesus' twin. When Jesus said, he that honors me must honor me like he honors the Father, he was like, look, you need to honor me just like you honor Paul. We are the same. We're human beings. We're not God, okay? Everything we see in the parables is going into the parables, is going into the two gods that was in the nation of Israel. Israel was bent on the son bearing the iniquity of the father, which was something God was totally vehemently against. So when we put it all together with the Quran and the Hadiths and the story we have in Joshua, look, chapter seven, it's in Joshua Chapter 7, that's the final clue I'm giving you, that this is a last day plague. The killing of the firstborn is something God will do in the end. The Quran has the truth. The Arabians is correct. The white man is wrong. wrong, 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 wrong. What's wrong with y'all? Why y'all so blind? Why can't y'all see that Jesus has not died yet? OK, he hasn't died yet. The Christians, man, they was in a rush. Paul was in a rush. Jesus did not die yet. So Joshua was in trouble all because of a con, a con artist by the name of Paul. And the Quran supports me. The Quran gives us an account where Jesus is questioned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If God wanted to, he could have destroyed Christ and his mother and what you was going to do about it. Nothing, okay? The truth is in Islam. Assalamu alaikum to my brothers and sisters in the truth.